Hmm. I am thankful that you chose this profound serious pathway. This path is a path like no other. PTSD is nothing to play with. And most cannot even fathom the hollow place it can take you to. I just want to say this. Life is a journey of growth and self-discovery. By subscribing and clicking on the notification bell to this channel, you'll be exposed to serious topics just like this one or motivational content and practical tips and actions to help you navigate life's challenges. We'll explore personal development, wellness, and strategies for achieving success and healing. So get ready to unlock your full potential and embrace positive transformation by doing the work yourself with some support. And as your sis, I am here. Now, let's begin. <laughs> Okay, before we proceed with watching this video, as your sis who care for you want to take a moment to provide a trigger warning. I understand that my channel and certain topics and visuals can evoke strong emotional responses and potentially re-traumatize individuals who have experienced similar situations. It is crucial to prioritize your mental and emotional well-being. Now in this video, I will be discussing post-traumatic stress disorder. And while I aim to approach this topic with sensitivity and respect, I acknowledge that it may still be difficult for some viewers to watch. The intention behind sharing this content is to raise awareness, foster understanding, and encourage empathy. If you are someone who has experienced trauma related to the topic being discussed, I strongly advise you to consider whether watching this video is in your best interest at this time. Your well-being is of utmost importance and it is okay to prioritize your mental health by choosing not to engage with content that may trigger distressing emotions or memories. For those who decide to continue watching, I encourage you to have a support system in place, such as a trusted friend or family member, life coach, therapist, or helpline to reach out to if needed. Remember, it is perfectly all right to pause, take breaks, or stop watching altogether if you feel overwhelmed, okay? I also want to remind everyone to be mindful of the comments that you put. Let's create a safe and supportive space for discussion where we can share our experiences and voices can be heard with gentle ears. I know this trigger warning was long and I don't care if some click off because of that. I just know that I needed to be for the ones who really needed this and are able to be prepared for the topic at hand. You know, that's why I am your sis, because I got your back no matter what. Now, what is post-traumatic stress disorder? Well, the American Psychiatric Association explains it as a psychiatric disorder that may occur in people who have experienced or witnessed a traumatic event, series of events, or set of circumstances. An individual may experience this as emotionally or physically harmful or life-threatening and may affect mental, physical, social, and or spiritual well-being. They go on to say that PTSD has been known by many names in the past, such as shell shock and combat fatigue. But PTSD does not just happen to combat veterans, but it can occur in all people of any ethnicity, nationality, or culture, and at any age, and they may avoid situations or people that remind them of the traumatic event. I will leave a link in the description to their webpage because I found some interesting things on their site, and I hope you explore that page, you know? So, I will 
break it down like this. Imagine you are swimming in the ocean, enjoying the beautiful day at a vacation spot, and suddenly you stumble upon a vicious shark. Now the odds of being bitten by a shark are pretty slim, right? But at that moment, your body kicks into survival mode, flooding systems with adrenaline and triggering a fight or flight response. You try to get away and your heart races and your breathing quickens and you feel an overwhelming sense of fear. You feel a bite and are now looking at the shark with your left foot in its mouth all the way to the ankle. Now, let's say you manage to escape the shark's attack without dying. But it is seeing your foot significantly damaged and the experience leaves a lasting impact on you. Every time you see water or see a shark on TV, you are instantly dragged back to that terrifying encounter. Your heart starts pounding, your palms sweat, and you feel an intense surge of anxiety, even though there's no immediate danger present because you at home chilling, right? This is somewhat similar to what happens to some of us who experience PTSD. However, instead of a shark, our traumatic event could be a car accident, physical assault, military combat, or more, which I will address later in the video. But what is it that sets PTSD apart? It's the mental and physical changes it causes. Traumatic memories become embedded like being on a loop, ready to reappear at any time. It's like having a faulty alarm system that triggers false alarms in situations where there's no actual danger. I'm sure I just gave y'all a vivid visual, so I think it's best to take our mental break right here. What you think? All right, let's do it. I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you for giving me the time to do what I love doing, and that is to share simply the information that I obtained over the years. Sometimes we don't see or appreciate opportunities when they come our way. So again, thank you for lending me your ear to hear. But I must ask if you knew about post-traumatic stress disorder before this video. If so, Please share some insight or information that I did not cover in this video in the comments below. I would appreciate it. They can generate stimulating dialogue. And just like a secret code, your likes and shares hold the power to reveal these hidden gems to a broader audience. By hitting that thumbs up button, you not only expressing your appreciation for the content, but also signaling to others that they too should embark on this incredible journey. Now, let's take our breathing break. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Okay, combat-related PTSD is the most common form, and physicians and clinicians have observed a large number of service members suffering from it throughout the years. They can deal with post-traumatic stress with symptoms like flashbacks, night terrors, nightmares, and persistent images and thoughts. And look, I just... I just want to say my heart goes out to anyone who has had to experience this. It's, it's just so, it's just, I, I just, I really don't have any words to express it. I really don't. Okay, um, where was I? Oh, okay, so disasters and accidents such as earthquakes, floods, tornadoes, fires, 
airline crashes, catastrophic car accidents, or hurricanes are the second most common types. Another one is victimization, which is prevalent in our world right now. This is one with lingering stress symptoms. The victims have either been abused or victimized in some way. These victims, like those who have been SA'd or R'd, have greater than average levels of anxiety, suspiciousness, depression, self-esteem issues, self-blame, flashbacks, sleep problems, and S-E-X-U-A-L dysfunction. You may read it here on the screen. I don't want my video to be flagged by YouTube, okay? Moving on. So what's another common one? Hmm. Oh yeah, a state of being terrified. People who have been terrorized or who constantly fear for their safety sometimes get post-traumatic stress disorder. Torture is another form of abuse that uses like brutality and dehumanization and confusion to render its victims helpless. Um, let me say beatings and waterboarding and um, electrocution are all forms of physical torture. Then you have psychological torture like threats of death and mock executions and verbal abuse and humiliation. And yep, another one is ST, S-E-X-U-A-L, torture. Yes, read it on the screen again. This one can be ARD, violence to the genitals, S-H, S-E-X-U-A-L, humiliation. Yeah that one too and the last one I would like to mention is torture through deprivation like sleep sensory social nutritional medical or hygiene deprivation and I know I just gave you a lot but I do want to mention that they believe that some people are predisposed to acquire PTSD because of hyperactive stress pathways and a faulty stress circuit and people with some character traits and ways of handling stress make certain persons more vulnerable to developing post-traumatic stress disorder. Man, that's a lot. I mean, it's, it's hmm, interesting. However, not everyone is the same. And the same traumatic event can have widely varying effects on various people. For example... Those who have a hard time finding the silver lining in otherwise dark situations tend to recover more slowly from trauma. They are not able to recover, you know? They lack post-traumatic growth. I'll talk about that in my Symbolic Action 1 video, which is coming up right now. <laughs> uh-huh, yeah, you see? Uh-huh, you like how your sis snuck that in? I am so lame. I know it. You don't have to tell me. I told y'all, okay? I beat y'all to the punch, right? <laughs> Will it be symbolic action one, post-traumatic growth, or symbolic action two, positive self-talk exercise? I can't wait to see which one you pick. I think both are great, so I will be there waiting no matter your choice. Your assist from a different miss has your back.